So I've just come back from riding the KTM 790 Adventure R off-road in Wales. Man, that bike is sick. So I count myself super lucky to have been invited out to the new KTM Sweet Lamb Complex in Wales as a part of a media launch for the centre there and also for the first opportunity to ride the bike off-road for the first time. And look, there is absolutely no doubt that the 790 Adventure range is one of the most important bikes uh, for 2019 and having ridden it all day off-road, it really justly deserves the anticipation. Now for me personally, the 790 Adventure R genuinely opens a new door to motorcycle riding that I haven't personally been through before. So what do I mean by that? As predominantly an on-road rider, when I'm thinking about off-road, I'm thinking about mud, rocks, sand, I'm thinking water, grass, steep inclines, steep declines, off camber terrain, cliff edges, you know, generally speaking, slippy stuff. And as a result, I'm thinking about these things. I'm thinking that I'm gonna be out of my comfort zone a lot of the time. Um, at some point, I know I'm gonna drop the bike, which to me equals damage, uh, costs, and I've gotta be able to pick it up as well. I'm gonna need great ground clearance. I'll need great maneuverability. Need something light enough not to get stuck in the mud. Look, so with all that in mind, the bike that would best solve these problems would probably look something like this. Number one, it'd be lightweight. Number two, it'd be easy to pick up and easy to maneuver. It'd have great suspension and great uh, ground clearance. It'd be tough, it'd be cheap to fix the damage and it'd have super grippy tires on as well. So look, taking all of that into account, I've never personally fully been able to get on board with the bigger adventure bikes available on the market. Now that's not to say that there aren't guys out there who can ride the wheels off these big adventure bikes really well and make it look super easy. Um, but personally, I'm not there yet. And to be honest, all the guys I know who have these big adventure bikes, basically the most they take them off road is the bit of gravel in between the road and their garage. And you know what? I could summarize my train of thought here when Charlie Borman dropped his GS1200 at the start of the long way around in London. Can someone help? Subsequently needed about five people to help him pick it up. So look, as much as I love um, riding off road, being a one bike at a time owner, an all out enduro bike doesn't satisfy all I'd want to do um, on a motorcycle on road, it's not got enough power and so on. And with that in mind, I'd really settled for the idea that I'd need to own two bikes to get the job done. And that is where the 790 Adventure R comes in, as it sits kind of in the middle. So obviously, look, this is a first ride review based on off-road. Um, next month, we're gonna be getting the bike for a couple of weeks, and my aim here is to get uh, a much better handle on the bike overall over a longer period, riding both on-road and off-road in the Lake District here, um, where, we're, where we're located. So what is it like to ride off-road? Well, firstly, it's incredibly confidence-inspiring. I mean, prior to the trip, I was almost naively hoping that I'd be able to ride the 790 Adventure R on the kind of terrain that we did, uh, that we rode in Spain last year with Red Tread. And to be honest, it was quite funny because um, a lot of the terrain at Sweet Lamb um, shares quite a lot of the similarities, particularly in the morning. It was really dry, dusty, it was really hard packed and pretty slippy. It was quite similar to the lion's share of the off-road terrain we rode on in Spain. And then we rode over the side of a mountain on grass, which is something I've never personally done before, and over some pretty big rocks and uh, ruts. As per usual, unfortunately, the GoPro footage doesn't do it justice. The bike was incredible. It was super easy to ride. It was way more nimble than I was hoping for. The 790 Adventure R comes with about the longest travel suspension in class, uh, 240 mil at both the front and the back. And to be honest, it just glided over a lot of the terrain we were riding on. 
Um, an ex-motocross rider and KTM employee, Brad Woodruff, gave it some massive air out of this jump on the training section. And we were chatting over lunch and he said, look, I was actually really surprised that the suspension did bottom out on the bike. And, you know, I was too, because he really gave it some, some big air. After lunch and we'd got used to the bike on some of this type of terrain, we hit the skills area for some slower speed maneuvers, you know, tree, uh, going over trees and going over some bigger lumps and bumps. Um, the Spain-like terrain, by this point, to be honest, had turned into mud and it continued to rain for the rest of the day. Um, my confidence levels were great at this point. I was amazed to be able to ride some of this stuff I rode. I mean, it was just a case of, yeah, do you know what, I'll give that a go. Um, you know, kind of egged on by the journos there as well, but you know, the bike was so confidence inspiring. And then we went to the top of one of these mountains, a route they call the roller coaster. Um, and this was totally different terrain. It was um, really loose slate roads, um, wet and actually really hard to get traction. Um, I slipped a gear at one point um, and then really struggled to get back um, up halfway up a hill without, you know, slipping back. Another major feature on the 790 Adventure R, and common to pretty much all the new KTM bikes, is the electronics package. To be honest, I just kept the bike in rally mode the whole time and adjusted the traction control settings. Now you can set it between um, one and 10, um, one being little interference and allowing massive power slides, and 10 obviously being the most uh, interference and really holds back the power when the rear starts slipping. Obviously this was my first day on the bike and I really, really didn't want to crash it. Um, I found between five and eight was a really good place for me to be. Um, it allows a good amount of movement, but also keeps you feeling really safe. This was particularly useful on the wet slate stuff. Uh, spinning up, in my experience, just causes the rear to wash out and uh, then you're into sort of dropping the bike and having to start all over again. Um, to be honest, all in all, I don't have any doubts about the off-road ability of this bike. And I know if I was to own it, I wouldn't have any qualms of riding it virtually anywhere. Um, virtually all the stuff we did in Spain, no problems. Um, and probably all the stuff that we've got here in the Lake District too, it'd eat that for breakfast. So we ran the standard Metzler Carew three tires uh, fitted to the bike, um, just with a drop of tire pressure, to be honest. Um, I did have a cheeky chat with the uh, owner of Sweet Lamb, Jonathan, um, and he told me that you know while the tyres fitted to the 790R are a great all-rounder, there are some different options available if you wanted to make the bike more off-road orientated, and that would you know transform the grip level uh, again. Obviously, KTM are fitting this tyre um, because it's understood that you know riders are going to be using it on-road and off-road. To be honest, I think that the grip you know levels were great overall it's just to say that there are there, there, there would be more available if you wanted it in terms of the abs i mean previously to riding the bike i was imagining it to be sort of a weird and obtrusive sensation constantly feeling like it was kicking in um, when the tire loses traction on the loose surfaces however honestly i barely noticed it um, at all which was a really good thing in terms of the overall braking, the specs of the brakes are great. I mean, it's got four piston radial mounted calipers on 320 mil discs, but I'll reserve judgment until riding it on the road next month. So in terms of the weight, the 790 Adventure R is 189 kilos dry. So you can imagine around 210-ish kilos wet. However, the fuel tank is at the bottom of the bike, which reduces the center of gravity of the bike to the lower part. While I thought it was pretty weird when I first saw the bike at the shows last year, and I thought it looked really vulnerable to damage, actually I did drop the bike a couple of times um, when we were practicing figure of eights um, off camber, and obviously um, it's much heavier than a pure enduro, um, but it wasn't at the same time like lifting a baby elephant. Um, with a straight back and the right sort of position on the handlebar, I was able to pick it up, um, facing the wrong way down an off camber slope without too much difficulty. Uh, in terms of the center of gravity, it feels low enough to have um, confidence doing low speed stuff. And we had a tight turn in circle uh, log course, which, you know, pleb gate here couldn't quite do, but I'm sure with a bit of practice, I'd get it on it, you know, no problems. On a tall bike with a high center of gravity, as soon as it starts going, there is no saving it. You just gotta let it go. But to be honest on this bike, I never really felt like I had to save it. 
Um, it was all fine, it felt really stable when you were just sort of stood with the bike. Now in terms of the engine, at this point, all I can say is that I haven't had enough time or variety of terrain which to really give it a full review. However, what I did experience with a super strong, powerful and torquey motor that has loads of power right through the rev range and way more than you'd ever need off-road. I mean, to be honest, I got into fourth gear at one point, but realistically, second gear was enough for the type of work we were doing. I mean, max sort of 50, 60 mile an hour is enough for me personally on this type of terrain. Now, the engine is essentially a 95 horsepower version of KTM's highly acclaimed 790 LC8 parallel twin, which is used in the 790 Duke, and it's been retuned to suit the style of the bike more. Yeah, next month, as I said, we're going to be getting the, um, the bike for a couple of weeks and I'll be able to comment more from there. But from what I've experienced, it's a surefire winner. So on to protection. About the first thing that I do when I look at an off-road bike is look at the protection on the bike, as I know I'm going to drop it at some point. Now, initially, when I first looked at, uh, at the 790 Adventure R, I thought it didn't look quite right because the fuel tank was going to be, you know, it's got sort of splays out at the bottom. It's going to be the first thing to hit the floor. You know, I can confirm that it does hit the floor, but KTM have put these massive plastic uh, replaceable protectors on the tank, which do a great job of providing tough protection for the tank and the bodywork. You know, I dropped the bike twice, and there was barely any marks on the protectors and a little bit on the hand guard. Now, you can replace these, uh, these protectors as well, and they're like 32 pound each, and the hand guard replacements are 51 quid. And to be honest, I don't think you'd need to do this unless you were um, looking to sell the bike. I think you'd probably need to do it at that point. So look, overall, an incredible bike. And my first impressions are it, it, it's amazing and genuinely could open a new door to do some incredible things I never really thought genuinely possible um, or certainly that I would be considering as well. Of course, as well, it was a fantastic opportunity to test Knox products in, in this environment. And of course, they were amazing, you know, it's the first time I've ridden off-road in the all-new Knox Urban Pro shirt. I'm going to be putting a separate review together of what I wore on the launch, um, so look out for that one. But I'm going to put a link in the description for all the products that I wore. Uh, but before I go, let me pitch you an idea. Imagine that you could have a bike that you could tour down to the south of Spain on, get to the hotel, drop your panniers off, and then genuinely be able to get out there on some of the most amazing trails that Spain's got to offer for a few days, and then be able to ride all the way home again, all on one bike. That's literally amazing. So thanks so much for watching. Please like, please comment, and subscribe to the channel, and look out for the next month or so when we're gonna be doing a much fuller review on the bike and putting the whole dual sport, on-road, off-road thing to the test, and let's see how it works uh, here up in the Lake District. Yeah.